Welcome to Contact, and we're so glad you've joined us today. We're currently in the middle of a series titled A New Commandment, and our subject today is With a New Commandment Comes New Associations, which is all about what uh, this new commandment that was given to us by Jesus. Last week we heard about how keeping this new commandment of love may lead to a whole new environment. This week we're going to hear about how keeping this commandment can bring new associations into our lives. So describe that a little bit about So this. it's not only going to be a people change, but it's also going to be an open heaven over a person's life where they'll start relating to the living God uh, in, in a new and different way. Right. So associating with uh, divinity, like yeah. with the Holy Ghost yeah. and, and fellowshipping with Jesus through reading the Word. Now, which was part of the purpose for Jesus coming to the earth to pay the price for the sins of mankind. So if you'd like to have some new associations in your life, you need to hang around to hear how that can happen. We'll be right back. Faith Landmarks Bible Institute is your access key to unlocking a comprehensive understanding in the Word of God. With over two years of study and 30 courses to choose from, our online curriculum offers a wide range of study topics that encourage practical application. From work to family, we understand that it can be hard to set aside time to study. That's why we make it easy for you through our online school by allowing you to study at your own pace and take lessons according to your personal schedule. FLBI is an affordable, fully accredited school that has been teaching students for over 30 years. Simply head over to flbi.org slash courses to view our available classes and register. It's time to invest in yourself, grow in your relationship with God, and use the knowledge acquired to transform your life here at Faith Landmarks Bible Institute. With on-time messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Come worship, receive, and fellowship with us every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., Sunday evenings at 7 p.m., and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Want to find out more about us? Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. We look forward to seeing you here at Faith Landmarks Ministries. Glory to God. Okay, so we, we have a, a series. This is called A New Commandment. Hallelujah. So we, we have a new commandment. You know, there's an old commandment. But then there's a new commandment. That's because there is both an old covenant and a new covenant. Now, I know most people don't carry around one of these anymore like I do. You know, believe me, I've got an iPad at home. I, I use it, but usually not for preaching. Yeah, my, my problem with an iPad is my finger's too big. <laughs> and it, it has a way of getting away from me. Hallelujah. Kind of like my iPhone, you know, it's, gee, you know, if they just figured out a way. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay. So, I, but I, I want to read to you, uh, first of all, uh, this is a New Testament passage. Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 18, uh, he says this, Jesus is actually talking, he's, and he's talking to Peter. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, when you were young, you girded yourself, put your own clothes on, and walked about wherever you wanted to go, did whatever you wanted to do. But when you shall be old, you will stretch forth your hands, another shall gird you, and carry you where you otherwise wouldn't go. Now, I, I'm, I'm kind of going out on a limb here, but I'm assuming that uh, every person that raised their hand knowing that they're saved, okay, you're actually being described in this same verse because you have a BC life and you have a now life. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Now, with some people, you know, one of the reasons why we do this, with some people, it's very indistinct. They don't know exactly when they got saved. But what, what we're going to, uh, hopefully, what we, we want to do is stimulate you to get into your prayer closet and narrow it down to exactly when you got saved. In fact, you, should, you know, what Jesus is doing with Peter here is he's drawing a line. To show him, you know, you were this, but now you're that. And the same thing is true of all of us. See how it got quieter all of a sudden? Yeah, because you're ruminating. You're, you're thinking about yourself, and you ought to. You ought to be able to put your finger on the spot. Hallelujah. I told you the story a few weeks back of how, I, you know, I have in the past taken my family around to different places and told them, you know, it's right in this spot when the Lord talked to me about this. And, and, you know, I thought I was doing them a favor. But, you know, then, then I realized, well, you know, if it doesn't mean anything to them, it's not going to do anything. Hallelujah. But you, you for, for yourself... You ought to know where you were, even what you were doing when you got saved, because there, there's a line there. Now, you, you might not know it, but God knows it. There, there's a line, a B.C. you and a now you. Otherwise, Jesus died for nothing. See, it, you're not going to get God out of that. He, he's not going to concede in any way uh, that Jesus died at the cross for nothing. He, you know, it won't happen because it's not true. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, so, and again, you know, recognizing you might have been raised with different terminology and raised in church, so was I. You know, and I had to conclude after I got saved that, you know, my, my first tenure was I was just a wet sinner. <laughs> I was baptized. My name was on the roll of the church, but it did not take with me. But so I know when I got saved, I could take you to the location. Hallelujah. God is good. How did we get off on that? Glory to God. All right. So, uh, let's get back to what we're talking about. Okay, so uh, when Jesus was uh, talking to Peter, it, it's essentially like drawing a line in the sand. Let's go on with the rest of what he had to say. Look at verse 20, uh, and this it helps to illustrate why this was necessary. Uh, it says, then Peter, turning about and seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved following, that would be John, who wrote the book, Gospel of John. Now, you know, John was, was you know, he, he uh, was an apostle also. Hallelujah. So, but, but Peter, you know, at this juncture, you got to remember things change people, and people change, so... Uh, Peter, turning about, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, that would be John, which also leaned on his breast at summer, that's uh, at supper, that's, that's back over in the accounts of Jesus with his disciples the night before he was crucified. And uh, then he said, this same disciple said, Lord, which is he that betrays you? You know, that would have been Judas, and, but John was the one who was questioning Jesus at the table. All right, then verse 21, Peter, seeing him, saith unto, the, unto Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Now, that sounds like uh, a little bit of a rivalry thing, brewing. You know, you got to remember, Peter was a, a salty character. He was a, a fisherman. And, and if I'm reading it correctly, you know, his environment bred him to be a tad tough. Verse 22, uh, Jesus said to him, back to Peter, if I will that he tarry till I come, in other words, he's my servant, what's that to you? Follow thou me. So in other words, you can follow Peter, you can follow me, regardless of what happens with John. 
Hallelujah. God is good. So, so what Peter was doing in that juncture was he was showing us some of his past. You know, that night at the table... And when Jesus was balking at, at excuse me, at Pete, when Peter was balking at Jesus washing the disciples' feet, that, that was Peter's rough side. But it was definitely B.C. See, that, that's the reason why Jesus needed to make, make this point. There's, there's a, a point where you're changed and you're made different. Now, beyond that point... Uh, there's going to be some higher expectations. How many of you are saved? Okay. Now, so the, the new commandment is now that you're saved, you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, you're made a new creature in Christ Jesus, you've been given a new nature, you're born of God, and God is love, which is another way of saying you're born of love. You have a love nature. Now, as it turns out, your love nature allows you to operate at a higher level than man has ever operated at in the earth. Okay, and so the expectation has gone up considerably. Now, it, it's not a challenge for us because we have the nature for it. Okay, but the point being is that it's God's will for us to walk in love and he expects us to walk in love. Hallelujah. So, you know, wow, there's some things about my past that, uh, you know, I don't want to keep looking back there. It's, you know, it wasn't edifying. It's still not edifying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, you know, get, get the, the thing. There's a line drawn B.C., before Christ, and after Christ. You're now life. Hallelujah. Now, so, wow, praise the Lord. So he, here, here's a, an additional part of this. Uh, let's recall that when Jesus picked his disciples, they were all kingdom material, Okay, maybe we couldn't see that, but Jesus could see that. They were kingdom material. Uh, they all had family associations with each other. You know, if you do a little study of the group of them, the 12 of them, there was uh, Peter and Andrew, James and John, and then several other brother uh, groups. And, and, uh, and some a few extra ones. But, you know, we, we've, we've just seen how people have a tendency to pick who they like. And so if, if they had been picking the disciples, it's very likely it would have been a different group. Now, you know, everybody is like this, so we're, we're not going to pick on ourselves too much, but people have sentimentalities and people have individualities about themselves, and we have a tendency to look for people that are like us. And then when we run into them, we call them our friends. Now, in a church like this, you know, it's, it's a, all different kinds of people. Every age, every culture, every race, every taste. Hallelujah. No, so some people are going to like certain kinds of food and other people don't like it. Okay? And so what the tendency is, is the, this saying, it's, a, it's an old saying, but birds of a feather flock together. So people have a tendency to gravitate, gravitate towards people that they're comfortable with. And then thinking somehow that's love. It's not. It's just a natural affinity. Okay, praise. I want to show you a few of these. So if you would please go with me back over to John chapter 13. Hallelujah. Uh, associations. New associations. Hallelujah. God is good. You know, you, you might have had a tendency, before, you know, in, in your previous life, before Christ, you might have had a tendency to sort of uh, group yourself with the wrong group. 
Hallelujah. And, and you look through here and you go, oh, gee, I remember him. Oh, yeah, he was great on the softball team. Wow, he, he sure did a lot of cussing. Are you out there? And so you might decide, you know, it's not in my best interest or my children's best interest or anybody that's around me. It's not in our best interest to uh, form an alliance with that brother or that guy. Because he, he still cusses like a sailor and drags along all kinds of stuff with him. Are you out there? So when the disciples were picked... That what they were going to do is, you know, they were all natural, but they were expected to love each other, which is a higher form of relationship. Now, that's telling me that they were all capable of that. You know, it was not above their pay grade, so to speak, that they would actually be able to do it. All right, so I have two verses here that I'm going to read to you in the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Both of these statements from Jesus Verse 34, he said, he's talking to his disciples, a new commandment give I unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. Now this is right after he was down on his knees washing their feet. Now that was like uh, a cultural norm that should never have been exceeded, which is the reason why Peter you know, retaliated and said, well, Lord, you're never going to wash my feet. That was his natural reaction. And then Jesus said, well, if I can't wash your feet, then, you know, you can have no part in me. So he, he said, well, I, you know, I'll, I'll take the whole bath if that's, if that's the option. Just a, a little bit about Peter. Hallelujah. Okay, so loving one another, sometimes the kingdom, see, the, the point is, is that they were all kingdom material. They weren't saved yet. But the kingdom will put you together with people that are not of your choosing. They're not, it might be something that you've never done before. Actually going to flow with people, sometimes that you don't even like. But one of the things that you can do is you can exceed your likes and step into another level. The love of God gives you the ability to flow, operate with people that are not like you. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, look at this, verse 35, and here, here we go with the associations part. Uh, Verse 35, Jesus said, By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love one to another. Now, you know, the disciples were people that weren't used to a crowd. You know, they, they weren't used to uh, patronizing a crowd or anything of that nature. They were fishermen, tax collectors, people like that. Hallelujah. So the last thing that would have occurred to them was the fact that there would be people who would be observing their behavior. Okay? And, and he said, they're, they're going to know who you are. They'll be able to identify you by the way you treat each other. In other words, you guys are entering into this new place where you are going to come under scrutiny. You know, when we first went in the ministry, they kept talking about living in a fishbowl. Yeah, well, it's not just for people in the ministry. It's for people in the kingdom. Because if you're going to walk in love, everybody's going to be watching you. They want to see how you handle this situation. They're going to draw a bead on you. And that's what started happening with Jesus' disciples. Okay. Now, so uh, if you would please go with me over to Acts chapter 1, and we're going to just... Go ahead and show you some more of that because it, it got even more pronounced. Hallelujah. So, so you might be used to conducting your Christian life with just your own insights. Okay? But wow, you know, there's people watching you.
Welcome back. Really glad that you've joined us today on Contact. We're talking about a new commandment and the fact that the new commandment opens up new associations for us. Okay, so, uh, you know, what happened with the disciples is they were hanging out with one group of people, but then they got saved and Jesus called them. Actually, he called them into the ministry and their associations started changing. But then, you know, God's intention for man is that with man's sins washed away, that man would have an open heaven, access to the throne of grace where he could start to hang around with Almighty God. Right. And then you start to, the Bible talks about people of like precious faith, Yeah, you know, and then we, we just recently had a, a church dinner mm -hmm. where we talked about how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. And so that may sound a little unusual to you. Maybe you're used to fussing and fighting and gossip and criticism. And, and I would just say that we are currently living in what I call a culture of criticism. But in Christ, in this new environment with new associations, you know, you will uh, especially... Learn how to, because it takes some getting used to. And you really need to belong to a local church somewhere, because um, if you've become a born-again believer, it's pretty difficult to transition from your old lifestyle into a change of, of new associations in a new environment if you never connect up with other believers. And the Bible even goes so far as to talk about that when you accept Jesus and your life changes, everybody thinks it's strange that you don't run in the same crowd, run in the, with the same uh, social activities that you used to right. when they, you know, I even had people say to me, well, you're no fun anymore. <laughs> you know, you're not partying and drinking and you know, you're not fun to be around, you know? And I thought, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so right. anyway, you know, you've got a whole world of just r real joy. If you get connected up with a body of believers who are on fire for God, like our group here, we're here excited about summer and our whole summer outreach program here in Richmond and the surrounding areas. It's involving everybody from our youth all the way to our senior citizens involved in the gospel outreach throughout the summer. And we want to invite you to visit our website, contact.tv and learn Learn all about what Contact and our Home Church Faith Landmarks Ministries are doing to spread the gospel. Here at Faith Landmarks, we're also preparing for the upcoming school year. Now, I know it's still early in the summer, but school will be back before you know it. Maybe you haven't thought about a Christian education, but we have a marvelous Christian school, Faith Landmarks Academy, fully accredited, K-5 through the 12th grade, and we're currently in enrollment consider coming to a Christian school with your children. We also have a daycare that cares for children from six weeks through K-4. We have a skill center that teaches everything from music and art classes to how to change the oil in your car or paint a wall in your house. So if you'd like more information about the educational opportunities provided by FLM, visit our website, faithlandmarks.org, click on the school tab, at the top of the page. We'd also like to invite you to partner with us in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ around the world by becoming a contact partner. Contact is good ground and we believe that every seed that you sow will be multiplied and returned back to you in abundance. You can give and partner with us simply by going on our website, contact.tv. Here's a few other th new things that are coming up that we'd like to share with you. Hey FLM, it's your weather girl Snowbell. Right now I'm on site at Longdale Elementary School and uh, it's a little stormy, but we're hoping for clear skies this July 22nd through the 26th because we're gonna beautify this school and we need your help. If you're available from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. that week, your diligence to rebuild America can sow a seed into the lives of these children. And if anyone is available to um, beautify me, I was just...
promises that I'm standing on Ain't got a flex to put you back in your place now When name is all I gotta say Jesus I'm calling these angels down I'm storming the gates of hell I think it's definitely shown me the importance of reaching out to others and really sharing, you know, God's love. Some of the kids, they've really been impacted because, like, they've heard about God before, but they don't exactly, like, know all about Him and know all, like, the great things that He's done. It's not just there's God and, you know, He's good. I feel like with Solve Rock Youth, there's a big emphasis on going out and spreading the information to others and, like, telling everybody about Jesus. Peace back. With on-time messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Come worship, receive, and fellowship with us every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., Sunday evenings at 7 p.m., and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Want to find out more about us? Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. We look forward to seeing you here at Faith Landmarks Ministries. Really glad that you've joined us today. We also want to invite you back next week for more of this series, A New Commandment. We also want to remind you that you can join us in person for any of our weekly services and upcoming events here at Faith Landmarks Ministries. You're always welcome. So if you can't join us in person, you can also stream our events and services online and on demand at faithlandmarks.org and any of our contact broad broadcasts on contact.tv. May God continue to bless you. We'll see you next time on Contact. <music>